When you're in the middle of an encounter, you want to make the big hits, but you need to hang around long enough in order to make those big hits. And armor might be just the thing that is actually going to save your skin, quite literally. So we're going to cover a little bit about armor and then get into how that affects your armor class. In this particular video, my name is Don. I'm trying to be the Sly Strategist, and let's go ahead and get into it. So let's start by talking about armor. This is available in the core rulebook on page 275. And you can see this table, it gives you not only unarmored defense, but also what defense you might have for a particular armor category. And that's the first thing we're gonna cover. We're kinda gonna go through column by column on the ones that matter. First, we're gonna start out with category. The armor's category is going to be things along the lines of unarmored, which is that first table 6.3. And then in 6.4, you're going to see light armor, medium armor, or heavy armor. And it indicates what proficiency bonus you would use while wearing the armor. So let's say you are, I don't know how realistic this would be, but let's say you are proficient in light armor. And you decided to try on some heavy armor. You are not going to be proficient in that heavy armor, and therefore you will not get a proficiency bonus on that heavy armor. Same thing goes for if you were for some reason happen to be a heavy armor proficient and not proficient in light armor, then you wouldn't get that proficiency bonus. It just applies to whatever your particular class, feats, and things along those lines have given you. Now, everybody is trained in unarmored defense, and you generally will have a proficiency for that as well, so you can include that. The next thing we're going to include is the AC bonus, and the AC bonus is the number that you receive that you can add to your armor class when you are putting it on your character sheet. So if you see a leather at plus one or a chainmail at plus four, those are going to be the additions you can add to your armor class while you are in an encounter. Next, we're going to talk about the dexterity modifier or the dexterity modifier cap. It's abbreviated in this chart as dex cap. And what this number does is it gives you the maximum amount of your dexterity modifier that can apply to your AC while you're wearing a given suit of armor. For example, padded armor, you have a dex cap of plus three. On unarmed or unarmored, you have a dex cap of plus five. However, as you go further up, we'll get to the breastplate that is only a dex cap of plus one because they are more restrictive and your dexterity plays less of a role. It is something to keep in mind when you are trading out armor because although that armor might have a plus four in a breastplate as opposed to a plus one for leather, the dex cap is very different. So make sure that you're not actually going down in your armor class when you are switching out your armor. The next thing I'd like to cover is the check penalty column. The check penalty column is a penalty that you would take to strength and dexterity based skill checks while you're wearing that armor, except for the ones that have the attack trait. So it won't affect your attacks, but it could affect any other strength or dex based skill checks that you might make. There's also a speed penalty. The speed penalty is how the particular weight, the encumbrance, the lack of dexterity you have in this new armor and how it would re reduce the amount of feet that you can move per particular stride, as well as any other movement types such as swim or fly. Those things are also affected by this particular speed penalty. And if you meet the armor strength threshold, which we're gonna cover just in a moment here, you will reduce that penalty by five feet. So although you might not be able to get rid of it totally, you will be able to reduce it. And then the last one I'd really like to cover in this chart is the strength column. The strength column indicates the strength score at which you are strong enough to overcome some of the armor's penalties. Notice it says some of the armor's penalties. It won't remove the full penalties to speed, but it will remove some of them, which is that five feet. This is a meets beats type thing, meaning that if your strength is equal or higher than this value, then you will be able to reduce that penalty by five. In the remastered guides that are coming up, 
This will most likely become the modifier as opposed to the value. Now, if you have this particular strength value, you will no longer take the armor's check penalty, meaning the strength index penalty that you would take otherwise, and you can decrease the speed penalty by five feet to no penalty, basically, if it was negative five, or to a five foot penalty if the penalty was 10 feet. Something else I'd like to cover before we actually get into the calculation itself is I want to cover some of the armor traits that you can have, and they would be in the column on the far right. First one I'll cover is bulwark, and bulwark basically means that the armor covers you so completely. So think of full head to toe, full plate with a full face guard, greaves, everything is covered when you are wearing that particular armor. It provides benefit against some specific damaging effects um, on a reflex saves to avoid a damaging effect, such as a fireball, you would get a plus three modifier instead of your dexterity modifier, simply because the bulwark armor totally encases you and prevents a lot of that damage from coming through. Something that's more common is the comfort trait. Now the comfort trait means that the armor is so comfortable that you can rest normally when you're wearing it. One of the things I'd like to bring up, and I'll go ahead and put it up over here, is if you remember in your rest and daily preparations, you cannot rest in armor. If you rest in armor, you will eventually become fatigued and have to deal with all the things that occur with that condition. But if you have armor that has the comfort trait, it is something that you can sleep in. Flexible armor means that the armor is flexible enough that it doesn't hinder most of your actions. And you specifically wouldn't apply the check penalty listed for that normal type of armor to your acrobatics or athletics checks. And then there's noisy armor. Noisy armor is kind of what you think, generally metal, generally squeaky. If things, every time you move, you can hear something grinding or moving around, it's probably gonna be noisy armor. This ar And it states that this armor is loud and likely to alert others to your presence. The armor's check penalty applies to your stealth checks as well, even if you meet the required strength score. So just because you have met the strength score doesn't do anything about the sound. It is still going to be noisy armor. Now the chart that I showed you is for general armor. You're gonna find that as you're adventuring, you're gonna pick up different armor and it might be chainmail, but you might find chainmail with comfort or you might find plate mail that does not have the noisy trait. So the chart that you're looking at is just general armor types. When you get new armor, very specifically look at its stat block and see what traits it has. Now I'd like to talk about armor class now that we've talked about some of the things that can modify what that final armor class is. Now this is the basic formula for armor class. It is armor class equals 10 plus your dexterity modifier. Now remember that is up to the armor's dex cap and that will be listed with the armor itself, plus your proficiency bonus. The proficiency bonus we're talking about is the proficiency bonus you have for light armor or medium armor or heavy armor or unarmored. So you will have a proficiency bonus for each one of those, especially if you are trained in that particular armor type. The armor's item bonus to your AC, if you have a chainmail shirt plus one, then that plus one would go towards your AC. And then it'd be any other bonuses or penalties that you could have. These could be circumstance, these could be spell effects, these could be various things. If someone gave you a particular spell that gives you a plus one to your armor class, that would apply there. As well as if you have a condition or if your armor or your shield or something is damaged, you might have a negative one to that particular. So that is where the other bonuses or penalties would come in. And we'll go ahead and do an example. So the example I'm going to use for my particular AC calculation is going to be a Dwarven fighter, kind of like a good base class there. So in order to calculate what his armor would be, you would take the base 10 plus his dexterity modifier. In this case, we're gonna say we only gave him during our character creation a plus one to dex. So he would have that particular dexterity modifier. And then we'll say he has hide armor. Hide armor is going to give him a plus three item bonus. 
with a dex cap of two, as well as his proficiency bonus in medium armor. Now, if we add that all up, you can see his AC is going to be 17. Let's go ahead and talk about one other thing that can happen in combat, especially with your armor. It's not necessarily in combat, but when you go from downtime to potentially waking up into combat, and that would be removing and donning your armor. So if you are resting in order to get your eight hours so you don't become fatigued, you're gonna to have to take off your armor. Your armor pretty much takes one minute to remove any type of armor. But when you try to don it, that's when it starts getting a little bit, not complicated, but there are definitely more based on the type of armor that you're wearing. So just remember that getting in and out of armor does consume time. So you have to make sure that you're wearing it when you need it. However, if you are at rest and you don't have comfort armor, you are going to have to take it off. So you might wake up after being attacked in the night and your armor class might be totally different than what you're normally used to. So donning armor in combat would take many, many, many interact actions. What that means is that it takes one minute to don light armor. So you would basically have to take multiple rounds in order to don that light armor and do nothing else while you're doing it while hoping you don't get hit. It would take five minutes to don medium armor or heavy armor. And once again, that would be all time that you could do nothing else but trying to don armor. So if you are trying to don armor in combat, unless there is some super compelling reason to do so, I honestly would say it would be better for you not to try to don your armor if you are roused into a combat. Now, I hope this little conversation brought some things to your mind, maybe touched something new, maybe made you look at something a slightly different way as far as your armor. Maybe you didn't know that if you were resting, you're gonna be fatigued if you rest in your armor unless it has the comfort trait. So therefore, you need to make sure you know what your armor class is without that armor in case you have to go into combat at that point. Little things like that are always good things to know. I do hope you enjoyed the video. And if you did, feel free to like, subscribe, or hit the notification bell for more videos that might be coming down the line. But whatever you do, I hope you have a good day and happy adventuring. Thanks.